it, 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 is this retro enough? It's the it, it's the only retro thing I have in my wardrobe. Today on Readers Reviews, I review Ready Player One. The film adaptation of the 2011 novel written by Ernest Cline, directed by Steven Spielberg. Which means it, it, it has to be good, right? 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 So the plot is pretty much the same as it was in the book. Old rich white dude creates a virtual reality video game simulator called Oasis. Old rich white dude dies. Old rich white dude creates a game within the Oasis in order for participants to find what's called an Easter egg in order for them to gain ownership of the Oasis and his entire fortune by finding three keys, unlocking three gates. And then five years later, young poor white kid finds the copper key, the first key, and hilarity ensues. Yes, yes, I know it's not all hilarity, but, but it was the only phrase that worked. This is about nostalgia, right? That was a phrase. Now I know from hearing how I summarize this story, you may be thinking that I didn't care for this story. No, I just still have the bad taste of the novel in my mouth. For all of you who didn't know, I recently read through the entire Ready Player One book and did a book report in my earlier video this week. Mostly because I didn't want to go into the movie blind, which I'm glad I did. Because the movie did make changes to the book, and if you've read the book, you can see the changes. And if you're like me, who has read the book, you can see that the changes that they made were incredibly necessary. <laughs> there were certain parts of the book that were omitted from the story altogether, thank God. Plot points that made it from the book were placed in a different order than they were in the book. And the challenges that the Gunters had to go through in order to find Holiday's keys are more centered around his life as opposed to his obsessions, which was a very deep breath of, breath of fresh air after reading the book. It helped with the overall flow of the story and the actual character development. Oh my god, there is actual character development in this bitch. So with that being said, let's talk about the characters that stood out to me the most, starting with still my favorite character, H. Also, a huge shout out to this reader who let me know about the actual pronunciation of H's name. I'm still kicking myself in the back for not realizing that after putting together context clues. While H is definitely on par with their book counterpart, I definitely appreciate the additions that they gave the character both in the Oasis and in real life. However, I still wish that they'd gone into as much detail in the movie about H's real life counterpart as they did in the book. I mean, it was kind of implied by who was playing H in the movie, but that's, that, that, that's, that's not cool. Like, yes, in the book, H is actually a black lesbian woman, who in the movie is played by Lena Waith, a black lesbian woman. But just because the character is portrayed by a black lesbian woman doesn't mean the same thing as the character actually being a black lesbian woman unless you go into it in the movie. The creators probably didn't mean anything by it, but for anybody else who read the book or was able to put context clues together, that's, that's, that's just not cool. Going back to seeing additions to characters, I can say the same thing for Artemis. They did make a few changes to her backstory as far as why she wanted to participate in the hunt, but they also pretty much amplified everything about her character that was present in the book. And we were able to properly see that both in-game and out-of-game. Also because certain plot points were switched around in this movie, her actions mattered a lot more than they did in the book. And speaking of plot point shifts, Motherfucking Wade. <laughs> Movie Wade benefits from these plot point shifts the most. It's because of them that he has a better understanding of the ramifications of everything that happens when they happen, which properly allows him to have that sense of naiveness in an appropriate portion of the movie, as opposed to the book when he doesn't really understand the ramifications of the hunt until the third part, in which case everything has happened, when he should have learned before then. The plot points allow him to take the hunt less seriously in the beginning of the movie, and then allows him to realize, oh wait, this is real, this is happening, people are dying when shit actually hits the fan. Or should I say the stacks? Too soon?
Other things I liked about the movie is that it utilized side information and characters as active parts of the movie and the story. For example, the portion in the prologue in which Halliday talks about the Easter egg in the video game adventure actually has a prominent story beat in the movie. Also, the character Irock is better served as a comedic relief dragon trope, as opposed to, you know, <laughs> this is what internet trolls sounded like in the early 2000s. All offensive language and everything. Yeah. Then again, he's voiced by this guy, so I don't know how much different that is. Also, and I cannot emphasize this e fucking enough, because there wasn't a slew of references to 70s and 80s nostalgia over the course of this entire story, not only was there enough of it to actually enjoy, but at the same time, I didn't feel that what made it in the final cut was just ham-fisted. Also, and this may be a bit of a spoiler for everybody who read the book, certain characters that died in the book didn't die in the movie because Wade learned his lesson the first time around, Jesus Christ. But at the same time, there are a few things I didn't care for, both original ideas and adaptations from the book. Starting with the latter first, there's, there, there's still a lot of iffy stuff that survived the transition from the book to the movie. A bit tamer than it was in the book, but, but still, it was, it was, ugh. Which one am I talking about? Well, for those of you who read the book, there was a slight nod to the masturbation paragraphs that were in the book, and a more convo version of the whole hairy fat guy named Chuck bit. Albeit it was turned into a dialogue moment between H and Parzival, Wade's avatar, and functioned more as a I'm concerned about you because you're my best friend conversation and less of, you know, locker room talk. It doesn't incriminate Wade like it does in the book because he's not a creepazoid who won't take no for an answer like he is in the book. And takes more of a turn of, you're the first girl that I ever talked to so I must be in love with you despite the fact that we have some chemistry, but not enough to generate a romance? But the whole conversation was still cringeworthy. And the original bit was just was, was just Samantha and Wade's romance overall. Albeit every time in which I expected them to kiss in real life, I'm glad that Samantha just had an aha moment regarding like thinking back to the contest and you know, being Artemis. But there was a portion of the movie in which Samantha and Wade met for the first time and his actions felt a bit too validating for me. Especially since the movie already established the type of person that Artemis is and what she's willing to do in order to see her goals go through. Like, Wade validating her over what she looks like in the real world shouldn't really hold that much merit to her considering everything that she did and everything that she said in the actual video game of the Oasis and how it carries over to her in real life. Like, like, bruh, don't. Too long didn't read. Movie Ready Player One is better than book Ready Player One. It moved some plot points around so that Wade could properly develop as a character and that I didn't hate as much and felt like a legit adventure as opposed to a like all the things I like nostalgia trip. With that being said, it's also a movie that honestly, I only need to watch once and I will be okay forever. More specifically like, oh, okay. What else is on? If you have to see it in theaters, catch a matinee. As far as home video, it, it, it's, a, it's a rental, maybe a DVD purchase, but I side more with rental personally. Anyway readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comments section below what you thought of the movie adaptation of Ready Player One if you've seen it. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Readers 101. Class dismissed.